Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright. It's early and it all comes down to the hourly head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, so to speak. What am I talking about right here? We're talking about this little shoulder, this head and shoulder. And how will we know it's going to play out? Well, I would use the Wix right here. I'm going to get that little squiggly line off. Call it, call it what you will. Call it what you will. It is a bit of a ascending triangle. Do we fumble around in here a little bit more before sending it to the upside of the downside? Well, let's see the volume coming in on this candle. Now, traditionally, this is a short setup. Why is that? Why do I always have the bear goggles on? Well, it's going to be a time to get bullish and a time to get bearish. To be fair, uh, after having, you know, quite a few down days and, um, you know, the dollar uh, kind of ripping to the downside at the moment, it might be time for a little bit more of a bounce. But we do see, yeah, low volatility coming up against the green 55 on the hourly time frame. Did we already get the first trade off it? Well, um, let's see what you think. That is about a 1% gainer. Sorry, 0.67. I think the average move on the hourly time frame is going to be about 1.5%, which would actually bring us down to the trend line of the massive uh, weekly trend line, which, by the way, CME is going to close, so we'll check that out. Uh, but I would say that, yeah, an hourly closure above there is going to look bullish for the short term for a short-term move to the upside. But do I think uh, the downside is over? Not quite yet. And the reason is, well, I will bring, oh, it's turning green. We got eight minutes left on this candle. We might see the breakout right before our very eyes here. The breakout or the fake out. And essentially what you want to see on this hourly reversal now that we've got a higher low and a higher high, well, the next higher low uh, might be a decent entry. What would that look like? So we bust through, boom, like that. And we could get the hourly reversal and we could get the uh, completion of the W kind of formation, which would be giving us a target all the way up here at 27.3. Well, we have that in mind. Uh, Woo Blockchain posted on Twitterverse, October 13th options data, 24,000 Bitcoin options are about to expire with a put call ratio of 1.23, max paying at 27,000 and a notional, national, notional value of 640 million. 190,000 ETH options are about to expire with a put call ratio of 0.71, max paying of $1,600 and a national value of 290 million uh, economic data coming out today is the the high ec, high impact hour and six minutes the Michigan consumer sentiment report I would imagine with the war and inflation and oil spiking to the moon that uh, sentiment about inflation expectations are, is going to be you know, probably higher than expected, just like yesterday. So maybe that's the news event that gets the reversal. Potentially, potentially also want to take a look at this on the 15 minute time frame. So not a lot of volume uh, coming in on this candle, but we are taking up, oh, we are taking it out. We got five minutes left. So a uh, bit of a reversal signal. So if we wick above and then we do not close above this wick, I think my bias is going to be correct here, which love to be a bear uh, when I'm right, <laughs> like yesterday morning. Um, don't love it at the moment, but 
it's completely fine. Bitcoin is completely healthy. And typically what the maker has to do, the market maker, he's got to send it up first to send it down and uh, suck more people in, see a nice little wick and then punch it down to 26.4. That has been kind of my bias buster all along here is that uh, on the daily time frame we did have a trend reversal. And as long as we are closing above, as long as we are closing above this pivot, Generally, things are good, and um, you know this is the, the the warning signal. So we've been talking about it as the highs were put in here. A wick down here is completely fine, um, as Nasdaq is picking itself back up from its bootstraps, uh, potentially putting in another lower high. We'll cross down below fifteen thousand bucks here today uh, on the hourly. Uh, Silver Cross. You know, what's the out of the most pain? Well, I think people are bullish. Um, uh, I think more people are getting bearish, actually, with the war and the fact that oil prices are about to go up because of sanctions and all that fun stuff. Uh, just taking a look at Dixie on the hourly. Looks bearish. Looks like it wants to come perhaps down and test the uh, breakout region before attempting a assault higher. I do think overall, um, I heard Israel was having to sell a bunch of their bonds and uh, I don't know if that's bullish or bearish for the dollar, but all around, you know, flight to security, the dollar is the most secure currency in the world. So perhaps that, um, you know, again, is the case but um yeah it, it, you know essentially as long as we're above this area you could even draw it down maybe a little bit more um, but that is a golden cross on the hourly time frame uh presenting himself right there so quick spike up or in and out and uh, that would be the bullish case for mr dixie come on mr bot all right uh, back into Bitcoin and the hourly is going to close in two minutes. Are we going to take out the wick? We are getting some volume now. Uh, volatility is increasing. And actually the silver cross uh, short the green 55 on the hourly I've noticed is more not so good. Uh, but generally speaking, the way you'd want that one to play out. Let's get it out of here is something like this. Um, but uh, again, you know, the liquidity is lying here, right at 26.4 and at 25.8. Um, I'm looking for a tap down there. And really, if they want to send it all the way back up to 29,000, well, we could get that tap all the way down to 25.8. 25.3, something like that. Let's take a look at the three month really quick. The three month, the three monther. So yeah, uh, major liquidity down at 23.6, uh, 25.8, yeah. So if we start to lose that region at 25.8, there is your uh, initial warning sign. How's the 15 minute going to close? So is the blue candle a reversal candle? I would lean towards uh, that being a continuation candle, but you can see right here it was not. And the M did play out all the way down. So this kind of price action, when you see this hammer, with volume, more volume than this, the sellers took control, pushed it down. And I, again, I think uh, Bitcoin has not really received any um, any downside displeasures, all things given with the war and whatnot. Bitcoin's just been trading sideways. 
trading sideways and just having a short short term uh, pull pullback, and that's why we've said, look, we're we're macro bullish on the dollar until the trend changes. The daily uptrend is in, the weekly uptrend is in, and it's okay to have a wick down to 25.8, which would be right there, and then a pop back up. And I've been saying that since up here. And that is still my base case. I'm ready to flip my bias uh, when the time is right. And really quick, I'll check in on Mr. Ethereum. Ethereum might be uh, leading the pack. I think there's a little bit. Um, so heavy liquidations coming in for Bitcoin at 27.3. And... Uh, even right here. No, that's how much is that? 74 million. 20. That's 20. Uh, I can't see this morning. It's a little bit too early. 72 million is the big number right there that hasn't been hit. So $100 million worth of liquidations right up here. But the big one would be at 20, call it 27,271. So. The question is, are they going to push it up here and then push it back down? Um, force the capitulation out of people. Um, let's look at it for Ethereum. Ethereum. So big liquidity down at 1507 and 1440. I was looking at that this morning. We already tagged this big bubble. The next bubble at 1561. Um, if it does push up there, I would expect a rejection and then kind of judge it from there. And I do believe Ethereum <coughs> has the potential for a good little bounce here and uh, would in fact I mean, this would kind of just be a deviation below the range. If we can pop back up in the range, then that would look good. Very similarly, over here, we deviated above the range, now below the range, and the cone shape continues on. The cone, I, I don't know why the cones just tend to work out, uh, but if I were to draw this cone, Megaphone, cone, whatever you want to call it. And where's this in line with? Yeah, that 1460. 1440. Um, if it is going to melt up or down, volatility is still increasing. Momentum is to the downside today as long as we're below 1600 bucks. Um, that is the daily. Uh, the 12 hour is snaking around. And uh, really just ticking above that uh, 1553 could provide a bounce up to the 1563 next jar of liquidity. And uh, that would be the retest of this level and then potentially on our way down. We are in the bearish control zone still. And um, we'll cross up today above uh, 1546. So we're close. We're close. We're right in the line in the sand. And did we close above the wick? No, we did not. That could potentially be your trap move right here, but um, I'm not sold on it yet. What about the hourly? How did the hourly do? Rejection on the first pass. Okay. We did take out the bear wick on this one. Where's our next bear wick? So essentially, uh, the bear wicks, what that means is um, when you take that out, and by the way, this is on the Lux Algo indicator. You can get it for free. Support and resistance levels with breaks, Lux Algo. So essentially, what typically happens when you bust through the bear wick billboard, um, it goes up a little bit. Gets a little backfill, and then you get the pickup continuation. Now, back below here on the hourly, I do think Ethereum will come down sharply, and momentum is crossing down. Cl 
close below 1549 on the next hourly. So we got, we're five minutes into this game plan. Volatility is uh, continuing to increase. Tough one to call, guys. Tough one to call. Um, but again, my theory would be is they're going to send it down first before they send it up. Um, I don't know if it happens over the weekend. You know, weekend trap price action is... Bad, bad, bad for your kidneys and your liver. Just kidding. Um, but it's just too painful, you know. Too painful unless you get uh, a setup like we had last weekend, which is, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. But you can see the liquidity lying here at 1476 for Ethereum. Um, and then down at 1320. Overall, um, why am I remaining a bit bearish on the alternate coin? Mr. Ethereum is a couple reasons. One, the ETH Bitcoin chart. ETH BTC, boom, bigger time frame. As we broke this falling channel or rising wedge or whatever you want to call it, to the downside, target down to 0.5, giving us a bit of a bearish bias for altcoins. In general, when this is down, altcoins are gonna be on the receiving end of the red candles, okay? Um, lastly, tether dominance is uh, putting in kind of another, well, not really, not a full higher low. I'd say this is a lower low, but relatively uh, constructive behavior. So when Tether dominance goes up, everybody's selling their altcoins, moving it to Tether, and that's why Tether dominance goes up versus altcoin dominance. Additionally, Bitcoin dominance is playing out the uh, other move that we outlined a while back. Um, I think that's it. Oh, the last comment I wanted to make here. While CPI inflation is at 3.7%, inflation is much higher on basic necessities. Car insurance, 18.9%. Car repair, 10%, 10.2%. Transportation inflation, 9.1%. Rent inflation, 7.4%. Homeowner inflation, 7.1%. Food away from home, inflation 6%, meat and poultry 4.8%. While headline inflation is down from the highs, many basic necessities are still exceeding 5% inflation. It's also worth noting that we do not have deflation. We have disinflation. While the rate of inflation is down, prices are still rising. Affordability is still getting worse. And I would concur with the prices um, just going around the board here you know, uh, when it comes to, especially going out to eat meat and poultry is like, it seems like food is getting a lot more expensive and $6 gasoline out here in California. Um, not too fun. All right. That's it for today. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. I will check back in with you guys on Monday. Take care.